With all the recent madness that has been going on over at Funimation, it did not surprise me at all when I woke up this morning to find myself tagged on Twitter being linked to a story about Funimation apparently not allowing users to unsubscribe from their monthly billing service. I should probably give the Discord a little bit of a shout out as well because some of you guys did tag me on there too and helped me figure the story out a little bit more, so I do appreciate it. Now that said, this discussion is a little bit out of the scope of my expertise because I am not a coder and I don't know that much about coding. I have a rudimentary knowledge of it, but I am by no means an expert or probably even like journeyman level. I would not even put myself on that tier. So I'm making this video to break the story because I don't believe anyone covered it on YouTube yet. And I'm also making this video because I'm hoping that some of you guys have more insight on coding than I do and you can provide some more information with us if you would like to look into this matter. With that said, let's get into the article right now. So here's the original Reddit post by user Stararia21. They went on to say, I ran through the anime I wanted to watch, Black Clover and some others, and wanted to cancel my subscription. This is what I found after the cancel subscription button didn't do anything after I clicked it. Link if the pick somehow doesn't work right there. I'll post this link in the description for you guys so you can get a better look at this. But anyways, they go on to post. For those who don't know HTML, the tag insert link here, it effectively is the guts of a button. The internal workings that make the button work with any HTML page, which is every internet page ever basically. The keep my subscription button is tied to this string. Notice how this string has a link in the directory called slash account slash number subscription, which when clicked leads back to the same page as you are currently on. The cancel subscription button has no such link. Instead, the pound symbol is there, which doesn't go anywhere. This effectively means anyone who does click the cancel button will have it go nowhere fast, effectively rendering them unable to unsubscribe. It's like I pulled my light switch from the wall, cut the wires behind it, and then placed it back like nothing ever happened. And this can only ever be done by the site developers or Funimation. And for the record, I've already sent the support request for cancelization. I just wanted to let anyone interested know about what may be going on behind the scenes. If this is a fluke, or this is a magically changed back to being functional after some Funimation people see this, then I guess it's all good. I just found this incredibly dishonest. Minor edit, just so people can actually see that line of code applies to the cancel button. Now the next part of the video, I'm just gonna show some of the screenshots for a couple seconds on screen. I'm not gonna talk if you just hear nothing, if you hear silence while it's redundant, but you know what I mean, that's why. All right, there we go. I just wanted to put that up so people could pause the video and take a look at the screenshots if they wanted. But of course, I'll also link the Reddit post in the description so you'll be able to access the links directly there as well. So this is really just the latest news in a series of controversies surrounding Funimation. I'm sure you're all familiar, hopefully, with the whole scandal going on right now with voice actors at Funimation accusing Vic of accusations with no proof. On top of that, they've also had a number of issues over the years regarding changing dubs to forest political agendas in their dubbing of anime. It's absolutely like insane that they do this. They will literally change the dub from the sub and change the lines to push a political agenda that Japan did not even talk about originally. Funimation has done this multiple times. What are you wearing that for? Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves. Sick misogynistic crap! What is that creep thinking? You can't make high school girls read that crap! Just the freaks who come in here hate women, so seeing girls degraded gives them boners and makes them happy! Another win for you SJW millennials. Now, as a disclaimer, I had to edit those clips. As you can clearly see, for example, the overlay, though this technically does fall into fair use because I'm using the clips for criticism and commentary. And also the clips displayed is only a minor fraction of the total length of this video. Still, with YouTube and the algorithm being all wacky, sometimes you do get false flag for those type of things. So I have to take some precautions like that overlay. That's why it's there. I also just want to disclaim that I did edit the clips a bit. Um, so you are missing some context, but I can assure you that you did hear the dub change in those clips. But if you want to look into it yourself, you're more than welcome to. The first clip is from Kobayashi Dragon Maid. The second clip is from, I believe, Hajime no Gal. And sadly, I didn't have the sub to compare, but I did want to at least show you the dub that was changed. But now you know a little bit about that whole shenanigans if you're not familiar with it. 
Some of the more recent controversy surrounding Funimation, though, that the homie Flash actually broke yesterday is Funimation's ties with Rick Santorum. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Rick Santorum, he is a politician. I'm going to read a brief excerpt from his Wikipedia here just so you can get a general idea of who he is if you are not familiar with him already. Richard John Santorum is an American politician, attorney, author, and political commentator. A member of the Republican Party, he served as a United States Senator from Pennsylvania from 1995 to 2007 and was the Senate's third ranking Republican from 2001 to 2007. Santorum ran for the 2012 Republican presidential nomination, finishing second to Mitt Romney. Now you might be wondering how Rick Santorum ties in with Funimation, and I can explain that right now. You see, Rick Santorum is a business partner with Jen Fukunaga. If you don't know who Jen Fukunaga is, well, it's simple. You see, Jen Fukunaga is the founder and current president of Funimation. And Gen later ended up opening Echo Light Studios, a Christian-based production company ran by Rick Santorum. Echo Light initially even shared office space with Fukunaga's Funimation. Now, before we go any further, I would just like to clarify something. The Wikipedia article says that Jen is the current president of Funimation. However, on February 1st, there were multiple news articles coming out saying that Gen had stepped down. Here's one of them. According to a report on Variety, a change has arrived for the leadership roles with an animated distributor, Funimation Entertainment. Founder, President, and CEO Jen Fukunaga has officially stepped down from his general manager role, transitioning into a new role as chairman. The search for a new general manager is currently underway. In the meantime, Fukunaga's memo to Funimation staff said he will work closely with them to ensure a smooth transition. In his new role, he will serve in an advisory capacity while overseeing the business and focusing on managing content partner relationships. This change comes after Sony took a majority interest in Funimation back in 2017. Fukunaga said it's been on the horizon ever since then, and Funimation truly hitting its stride makes this the right time to start the transition. Now for you business people out there, that article didn't explain the situation too great. I think they're using the term GM very vaguely as a general manager is usually in a lower tier below the upper management like the CEO, CFO, and COO. So this article I'll read briefly, just a part of it so we can get a little bit more clarification. This is from Fukunaga's memo itself. Funimation team, as I announced at our all hands today, I will be stepping into the position of chairman of the board at Funimation and transitioning my GM role within the next six months. We've initiated the search for a new GM, and once we have selected the new leader, I will work closely with them to ensure a smooth transition. In the chairman role, I will continue to have oversight of the business and will focus on managing relationships with our content partners, making sure we continue to have the right partnerships in place. I will also provide advisory services to the team as needed. So now we have a little bit more clarity as to why some of these articles are using the term GM in the way that they are, and it's because Jen used the term that way himself. So they're just rolling with that. So now that we have a little bit more insight on that, let's move forward. Just to reiterate how this all ties together, Jen ended up co-founding Echo Light Entertainment, which is ran by Rick Santorum. But how does this really correlate to Funimation and make them even more hypocritical than they already are? That is what I'm going to explain to you right now. You see, Rick Santorum has a little bit of a history regarding being anti-LGBT. For example, here's an article from 2015 titled, Rick Santorum tells Raven Simone why he's against gay marriage. It's a pretty brief article. Let's read it really quick. You're not going to have a society encouraging the behavior that is in the best interest of children and the future of society. Rick Santorum stopped by The View for an episode that aired today, and he spoke with Raven Simone about same-sex marriage. Raven Simone said as part of the LGBT community, she wanted to ask Santorum why we cannot have equal marriage rights in your opinion. The whole purpose of marriage is to encourage, for society to encourage men and women, to come together to form permanent bonds for the benefit of each other. And just like you would say, well, two women coming together, that benefits each other, said Santorum, but the greater purposes of marriage that society has always valued is to bring men and women together. So when they have children, there's a permanent bond by which those children can be raised by their natural mother and natural father. He then continued,
When you have a law that says, as the court said, that marriage has nothing to do with children anymore, what you're going to have is, you're not gonna have a society encouraging the behavior that is in the best interest of children and the future of society. Raven Simone responded that she doesn't understand why he doesn't think LGBT people can raise a very beautiful, smart, intelligent child just as much as a straight couple can. He responded saying, I'm not saying that a same-sex couple can't have a very positive and nurturing environment, countered Santorum, but the natural mother and natural father of that child is what historically and I think sociologically we look at today. It is in the best interest of that child to be raised by their natural mother and natural father. It's in the best interest of the parents to raise them. And that's just one example. You see, there's plenty of articles covering this whole thing. Obviously, I'm not going to read all of them or we would be here all freaking day long. So let's continue. In summary, here's how it is. Jen and Rick Santorum both have ties together, both work on Echo Light Entertainment Studios together, and due to the history of anti-LGBT views that Rick Santorum has, it does rub off on Funimation as well. And since nobody at Funimation is targeting Rick Santorum for his views, but they'll target Vic and call him homophobic, it is just very, once again, hypocritical of all of them, they pick and choose their battles, but they stand on moral high ground regardless. Or I should say they try to stand on moral high ground, but luckily more and more people nowadays are seeing and calling them out for their BS. Now, just in case there's any viewers out there who still might think that Vic is homophobic, and I don't believe any of you do think that, but maybe there's a small fraction of you who do. I'm going to end this video by playing a clip from A Howl at the Moon by Nathan Squires, which Vic narrated. A Howl at the Moon is literally a gay novel. Would a homophobic man actually narrate an entire gay novel? Obviously not. This is only one example of why he's not homophobic though. There's plenty of other reasons that I could go into. However, like I said, I don't think any of you guys doubt that Vic is not homophobic, but in case there's a few of you that might still be conflicted on that issue, I'm going to wrap this video up by playing this clip. So I'm ending my part of the video right here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you did. And please turn notifications on as well so you can be aware of when new content comes out. And if you'd like to support the channel and content we produce here a little bit more, consider becoming a sponsor over on Patreon. With that said, I'm out of here, guys, but enjoy this clip. I'll see you next time. A Howl at the Moon by Nathan Squires It was a perfect night, the sort of night when nothing could go wrong. There, amidst the perfection, and embraced in the serenity of the moment, two lovers, finding themselves in a clearing in the woods neighboring a very special stream, found themselves. Tied in both body and mind, their lips and skin collided, making their undying emotions to one another known as intimately as they knew how. Their masculine bodies entwined much like the surrounding foliage, as their pleasured moans and breathy grunts shared between them echoed between the lumbering oaks and willows and pines, a symphony of melodic chirps and coos of nature accompanied them.